Hey guys, welcome. Uh, it's Fluffer with a. I'm bored, so I wanted to make a video. Video. Um, so I laid out a TE uh, a while back that I wanted to fly, but for all intents and purposes, uh, we'll just use this as a basic, uh, basic, just get in and fly type situation. So um, what we're going to be working on today are air to air intercepts. And what I mean by that is we're going to be taking off from a specific point with a given target. Uh, let's say that there was a border incursion and these guys are coming in for whatever reason, breaching our airspace, and uh, they're not friendly. Well, anyways, what we're going to do is we're going to go up, find them, neutralize the target, and then RTB. Pretty simple, self-explanatory type type stuff. As you can see, I have a couple of packages that I fragged in this uh, in this video. Uh, we'll just go with a two ship that's going towards a strike. Let's say that you know in your strike formation or in your in your strike package that last minute you're getting orders that you're no longer going to be doing an air to ground strike. So what we'll do is we'll load up with a couple AIM 120s and an AIM 9X for these guys. AIM 9 Mike for the rear aspect portion. Let's do a combat mix of uh, three and three. Sounds a boot, right? Actually, we could do. There we go. That's a pretty standard combat mix. Uh, other than that, that's pretty much it. We sniper XR pod to help us. Uh, um, to help us identify, and I've given us a North Korean version F-16 skin. That was included when we built the TE because I thought it looked pretty cool and haven't used it in a while, or haven't used it ever. Uh, so basically, that's about it. I don't know why it's in flight. Actually, let's go ahead and switch this over. Yeah, it sounds about right. That's an escort. All right, we'll just use this guy instead, since everything's set up for us. We'll take off the HTS, load up a targeting pod, and we'll do. A standard combat loadout of voila. That sounds about right. Anyways, a couple things that you always need to do before you take off is load up your tower freak on a default. Uh, what we use is preset 15. And that works uh, works out for us pretty well. Anyways, the takeoff is in about 20 minutes, so we can actually go in. And don't worry about that red mark on the uh, flight plan. Not a big deal. We're we're flying an intercept anyways. All right. So I'll see you guys in a second. All right, guys. Welcome back. Anyways, uh, getting on to it. I like to start off with a uh, ramp start. So let's go ahead and do that. And we're actually in IFR conditions, but whatever. We'll close the canopy for good measure. And what I like to do when I set up is I like to go from left to right all the way around the cockpit. All right, so go and set the lights on, fuel to norm, and real airplane that would actually already be set. Go to UA UFC on the audio or on your aux com for the primary. Com one all the way up. Com two, the threat knob all the way up. Missile step. Let's go to both. Yeah, I don't think we have an HMCS. Don't care. We'll get that in a second. Switch program two into men or we can go standby for now parking brake to on let's go cat one config lights are on as well coming around to the HUD side go and bring the the HUD up doesn't really matter it's not gonna red ball the jet since it's sim sensor power normally supposed to turn this stuff on after you get aircraft power don't care and we'll go and turn the pressurization on as well and we'll get these switches once we start the JFS-2. Alright, so a couple other things that you need to do in order to get the aircraft started. Make sure that you have your throttle detent set correctly, and we'll leave it at auto for now. Turn the electrical power on, and start 2. Alright, a couple things are going to happen. JFS start 2 initiates the jet fuel starter, and what we're looking for is 20% on the engine RPM, but once it hits 20% on the RPM, you can hit your D10 key if you have a bound, or Alt-I if you're using the keystrokes uh, key set. Wingmen should be starting their planes up as well. Alright, there's 20%, the 
move the throttle over the horn, as they say, and hit the detent button. All right, that's going to bring our RPMs up slowly. And you're going to hear the plane start doing some pretty cool stuff. Let's go and turn the uh, radar altimeter on, and we'll go to alt the radar altimeter. There we go. Sorry for the stuffy nose syndrome. I'm kind of under the weather. All right, the lights are on. Let's give it a little bit of F hit in RPM. All right, back down. All right, let's bring our avionics on, which is this guy right here. And we'll go to norm on the INS. From here, you can initiate your bit as well. It doesn't really matter. It doesn't do anything for you. And we also need to load, need to load our DTE. And the best way, actually, let's go and turn the RWR on as well. That's this guy right here. That's going to turn your RAR, as they like to call it, which is your beer, beer can sensors, which are these, these guys right here. The, they detect enemy radar signatures. All right. So what we need to do now is we need to load up our DTE. So we'll go and hit SMIZ. Exit out of that, go to DTE, and hit load. All right, what that's doing is it's loading the data cartridge into the jet. Now we have our preferences set. And now if I go to HSD, and as soon as the INS is aligned, it should come up with our flight plan. Verify that our lights are on, they are. The bit has passed, so it's not a big deal. And let's let it run its bit. We'll go to CRM mode and wait for 100 seconds on the jet. And there's a couple things to note here. Uh, we need to get our QFE, which is the local altimeter for the base. Make sure our freaks are set correctly. We are on uniform 15. That guy is set. That guy is set. Falcon 1-2, rejoin formation. Tell me I set the fucking tower free. <sighs> Sigh. We don't really need it. Best way to do... Let's say that uh, for whatever reason we're not working with the tower today, unfortunately. Just go and bring the dial down until you're level. 2986 sounds about right. That accounts for the field elevation, the barometric pressure, etc., etc. And since we tabbed out of that, we need to go back to the INS page. You hit list, hit that, and we're at 2.1. Technically, you're supposed to wait for a full on INS alignment, but since it's a sim, it doesn't care. We can actually go ahead with a de degradation, and voila. It says INS ready, 2.3, blah, 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 don't care. And the biggest things that you're going to notice are your flight plan here. Alright, so we need to get the rest of the aircraft on the data link. Best way to do that is hit Control O. And once we do that, it's going to pop up uh, the rest of the jets. Hit List, Enter, Air to Ground Data Link. Yes, 21222324. They should all be popping up there. Check FCR Control. Okay, I don't care. Uh, let's go to. Da, 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 da. It's been a while since I've used this. Alright, cool. And we'll hit continuous for the data link. I think we're ready to go. This is going to be interesting trying to get the fucking chocks yeah, removed. Alright, well, you got to jerry-rig it sooner or later, right? Since we don't have comms with ground, I think it might be a bug with the, uh, with the theater. Just all forward, bring it into burner, it'll break the chocks loose throttle back, hit K for idle. I don't even know what the active runway is. A seat not armed. I usually get that at the end of the runway before we take off. Let's go and taxi forward. And uh, shift uh, shift backspace or uh, whatever the fuck that key is next to the sh uh, right shift uh, enables your nose wheel steering, which is important if you want to turn the airplane. Anyways, we're going to be turning out to the right here, taking the active, which is 
what we're going to assume is this guy right here, since it's going to take us out to North Departure. Press the picture. Century. One Falcon. One one. What's the picture? Falcon. One one. Sentry. One. Picture clear. Actually, fastest launch in F-16 history, and normally it would take uh, in real life about 10 to 15 minutes. Uh, not probably less than that. Probably like five to 10 minutes on a good day. All right. So, anyways, we need to go ahead and arm the seat. The seat is armed. No dummy lights on the on the warning control panel there. We can actually take the active, which is yeah. Always assume uh, that you're you need to check your magnetic heading. So it's, it looks like one one is the uh, magnetic heading for this runway, and that matches up. All right, waiting on the other jets. Don't care about them. Let's go and take off. I'm going to tell the second element R two B anyways, and we're bringing it up to eighty percent. Here we go, off the brakes. Nose wheel steering off, and full burn. We'll induce a little bit of ground effect once we rotate, since the weather is pretty crappy. Altitude. Altitude. Do a north departure, 350 knots. Check left for steer two. Hold 10 degrees nose up at 350. Let's see if these guys are... Slight right roll, we can correct that with the trim. I don't think I have it key bound to the stick anymore. Yeah, I do. Sweet. Let's go and climb above the weather. Nose is down. Three, airborne. Four, airborne. I'm like drunk and all over the place. Looks about a good trim setting. We'll cruise at 500. It should keep us pretty much lined up. Two in position. All right, there's steer two, check and right for steer three, 47 miles, let's call 500 knots, 0.85 Mach, sounds about right. Let's call for a picture. Sentry, one, Falcon, one, one, what's the picture? Falcon, one, one, Sentry, one, pictures multiple groups, nearest hostile bullseye, one, three, five, 200 miles, 27,000. One, three, five, 200, let's figure out where bullseye orientation is. One, three, five for 200, put some right about here. To get a good geographic location of where that is, okay, that's actually towards their airspace. Let's go and check towards steer uh, seven. And that should put us in line. All right, a couple things to note here is you want to change your radar your antenna elevation. MIGs like to fly low. We're roughly about 47 miles from the target area. Let's go and climb up. Falcon one three, return to base. 
three, heading home. Four. Let's go, Master Armon. Let's go to Vector. Sentry, one, Falcon, one, one. Request Vector to threat. Falcon, one, Sentry, one, nearest hostile, big 23s, two ship, bullseye, one, three, five, 200 miles, 27,000. Straight on the nose. Roughly about 37 miles. All right, there we go. We got a we got a hit on the FCR. Let's go and keep that in crosshairs. They should pop up somewhere around here next. If they're headed towards us. Tell two defense in. Two fence in. Change our radar to antenna elevation. Where the hell do those guys go? Let's focus the beam. There we go. Shit, don't lose them. All right, so second step you need to do once you lock them up. All right, we see your bullseye positions roughly about 133 for 209, 27,000 feet. Falcon, one, one. Declare. Declare Falcon, the target. One, one. Sentry, one. Contact confirmed hostile. ID is MiG-23. All right, that's our bandit. Let's go and intercept them. And we'll pause it here. All right, a couple things to know here. Pretty important that you keep that guy locked up. You can put it in twist mode. That way you can track more than one target. Um, but normal two-ship opera operations, I'm going to want number two to start, uh, if he was a real person, to start looking for uh, the trailer. Or number their number two. Which in this case, you can actually see them both. And the general, let's see if we can get the diamond. So it looks like the, the lead guy is in front, obviously, and the number two is in the trail. I would tell the number two uh, at that point, and I can I think I might be able to demo it in this uh, in this scenario. Is what I'll do is I'll unpause it, throw it into Twiz, track wall search, and if I drop if I soft lock them, the number two should pop up, which we can expand it, expand it again. you can actually break out the two of them and normally what I can do is say to Falcon, attack my target one, two, Falcon, one, one. engage mid 23 bullseye one three zero two hundred twenty miles twenty six thousand two we'll go I dropped my target now I'm gonna go look for the the trailer Tell number two, use weapons free. Falcon, one, two, weapons free. They're running. And the way you can tell two, is go. we're pretty much Mach 1.1, and they're still about 300, uh, 320 in front of us. And the ladder's not getting smaller. So this would be a non-optimal shot, and they're running. And the chances are, the Soviet Doctrine, uh, they're probably running towards the SAM site. Let's go ahead and go jammer on. Jammer's on. And let's see if we can VID these targets with the targeting pod. Didn't even turn it on. Oh well. Alright, cool. 
couple things to note here. That sound you just heard was the MiG-23 is turning in to commit on to us. Now you see that we are in uh, Fox 3 long, which is at this carrot here. This would be Fox 3 medium, and then Fox 3 close within that carrot, or within that bar on the ladder. Uh, we could actually employ our weapon right now and have a good chance of hitting them because our closure rate is actually uh, about a about a thousand knots per uh, per uh, per hour. All right. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to hit the unpause button and the pickle button. One fuck three long. And in a call and engagement, you would say call sign call sign. Fox 3 long, 129, 218, 19,000 MiG-23s. Pop some flares. Cat flare. Cat flare. These guys, they turned and run, and you can see the pitbull marker on the uh, FCR means the uh, the missile is tracking on its own. There's two behind me. Fourteen thousand. So what this guy's gonna do is he's gonna probably break the lock on that missile and then turn back into us. And at that time we're going to shoot another Fox 3 and force him defensive again. Our closure rate right now is actually negative. Let's see. So we're in range, or we're not in range, but he doesn't know that. And if you're ever in a PvP situation, uh, you can force him defensive. That way, he can start bleeding that energy, giving you an opportunity to catch up to him. Let's see if we can demo that. You can clearly see the two ship right now. And they're turning a beam of us. Which means that our closure rate should increase. And they're turning back in. Fox 3 long again. One. Fox 3 medium. That was actually Fox 3 long, not Fox 3 medium. You can see. One. Pitbull. Alright, we'll get a kill on that one. on the dogfight primary. Splash one, turn back into that guy. Lock. Alright, so what we did is we killed the number one and we got into a knife fight situation with the number two. Uh, our closure rate is actually going to hurt us at this point. We're probably going to overshoot him and we're in a pretty good guns track. I could actually shoot a Fox 2 at him, but I don't want to waste the missile uh, given the chance that he might not. The smart thing to do at this point would be to call our wingman and tell him to clear a six. At this time, I uh, probably won't be able to see it on the HSD. So let's commit into the target.
Altitude. Altitude. And there's that. Let's well, RTB. That's enough fun for one day. What do you guys think? Number two's like, what the fuck are you doing, bro? <sighs> Let's see if there's any other bandits. Sentry, one, Falcon, one, one. Request vector to threat. Falcon, one, Sentry, one, nearest hostile, big 23s, two ship, bullseye, one, two, zero, 216 miles, 27,000. Alright, they're pretty far to the northeast of us. Let's go and bug out. Until number two to rejoin. One, two, rejoin formation. We should see him visual off of our uh, one, two, on my way. Our right three o'clock. And he should be rejoining underneath us. Pretty successful day. Why isn't my autopilot working? Oh well. Whatevs. We don't need it. Let's go and time accelerate back to base. Cowboy, one one, in. Two, in position. Oh, two. Uh, the beauty of time warp. Caution. Caution. Actually, I had pretty good fuel and told weight to make it back uh, pretty well. Let's go and start our descent down. trim up the jet. It should be asymmetric. Yeah, it's asymmetric. Altitude. Altitude. So these would normally be IFR conditions, but because it's Falcon, I don't give a shit. We'll land BFR. 24 miles, should see the base on the HUD. Let's go and time accelerate again. Seven hundred pounds of gas, plenty. Someone's having a bad fucking day. I don't even see where the landing lights are. We can uh, enter in a left downwind. Oh, this will be interesting. Actually, let's do... Uh, that was our takeoff runway, so let's just do that. I don't even know what the winds are. Speed brakes out, looking for, we'll do a fast approach 180 till we're about one mile. Short final, then we'll drop down to 160. 3,000 feet, pretty high. And we're below 300 gears coming down. Yep, it, it is 1 1 that is deactive. Alright, we're turning right base to final now. Right in the right in the AOA indexer. Just pretend that there's no rain or weather. We're inside the minimums anyways, continue. Oh yeah, that's a nasty cross one, huh?
We're fighting it all the way down. All right, let's bring the power out. Ugh, that would have been bad, real life. Oh well. Yellow. Anyways, that's a tutorial on how to kill bad guys. Enjoy.